In Sonic the Comic issue 100, Dr. Robotnik's reign over Planet Mobius finally came to an end. Robotnik ruled Planet Mobius with an iron fist throughout issues 9 to 100 until he was finally defeated in the final victory. But just how did we get here? Let's go back to the very beginning to see the rise and fall of Robotnik's empire. Dr. Robotnik was born via the horrific lab accident involving Dr. Ovi Kinterbor falling into the machine holding six of the seven Chaos Emeralds. The evil from the unstable emeralds combined with the rotten egg he was holding turned the kind, caring Dr. Kinterbor into the evil Dr. Robotnik. Robotnik left Kinterbor's laboratory and set up several new base of operations such as the Wing Fortress and the Death Egg Satellite. It wasn't long before Mobians began to disappear across the planet and the very first Badniks began to appear. After several serious setbacks at the hands of Sonic, Robotnik moved his base of operations permanently to the Special Zone. There he built his new base, the Egg Fortress, and destroyed nearly all of the Star Posts so no one could meddle with his plans. Robotnik took over this part of the Special Zone, making any who lived there his slaves, as we will soon see. Some time passed, Robotnik had some serious plans underway. The Fall of Mobius Sonic tells Porker Lewis and Johnny Lightfoot travel to the Special Zone to see Sonic's friend the Omni Viewer, with one of the few remaining star posts left on planet Mobius. Once they meet up with the Omni Viewer, Sonic shows his friends the origin of how he became blue and the origin of Dr. Robotnik himself. However, waiting in the shadows is Robotnik, who uses his control over the Omni Viewer to get rid of Sonic by sending and trapping him someplace in the distant future. The Omni Viewer is defenseless against Robotnik's commands. Robotnik has won. Sonic is gone. Sonic and his friends return. Well, it would be a pretty short video if they didn't. The Omni Viewer was able to get around Robotnik's commands and only transport them six months into the future. However, six months was more than enough time for Dr. Robotnik to take complete control over planet Mobius. The penalty for non-compliance with the work enterprise scheme is death. Robotnik learns of Sonic's return, but gloats it's far too late for Sonic to stop him now. Dr. Robotnik has complete control over the entire planet. Planet Mobius is now RBR, ruled by Robotnik, and his evil spreads to nearly all zones across the globe, some more than others, however the Metropolis Zone remains the centre of Robotnik's evil empire. He would build countless Badnik processing plants and slave factories. The peaceful Mobians would tremble in fear at Robotnik's ferocious troopers. So there you have it, Robotnik is the ruler of Mobius, and the whole planet is choking under his evil influence. Robotnik couldn't personally oversee every zone on Mobius, so placed some of his minions to run the more important zones, like the Marxio brothers in the Casino Night Zone, followed later by Max Gamble, and Nuts and Bolt in the Chemical Plant Zone, just to name a few. Robotnik would continue his relentless attacks to capture Sonic and his friends and anyone else who aid them. Sonic and company would travel Mobius in disguise as Bob Beaky's Travelling Circus to avoid detection from Robotnik's forces. A while into Robotnik's reign, the Doctor decided to change his form and transform into a new body. Robotnik cocooned into a giant egg while the transformation took place. Grimmer was appointed Robotnik's chief scientist. He would be Robotnik's most loyal and trusted assistant. At last, Robotnik returned with his new body, quoting himself to be more powerful, more deadly and more rotten than ever before. Shortly afterwards, Operation Metallics began. The project was to build a metal version of Sonic able to match him and beat him in every way. With Metallics the metal Sonic built, Robotnik sent him to finish Sonic off once and for all. Robotnik had hoped to use the Miracle Planet as an infinite power source for Metallics, making him unbeatable. Metallics was eventually defeated by Sonic. Dr. Robotnik would then move from the Special Zone to his new base of operations, the Death Egg 2. This would be the second Death Egg that Dr. Robotnik had built after the destruction of the first one. 
The Egg Fortress, however, was still operational. Robotnik had set up his old fortress to become an automated factory designed to produce the ultimate Metal Sonic, after Sonic defeated the first Metallics on the Miracle Planet. The Brotherhood of Metallics The Brotherhood, led by the Emperor Metallics, would later betray Robotnik. Back to Robotnik, his new Death Egg 2 suffered a catastrophic accident as the main engines failed, forcing Robotnik to make an emergency crash landing on Mobius. However, the Death Egg didn't crash land on Mobius at all. The Death Egg crash landed on the floating island. The Guardian of the Master and Chaos Emeralds and Keeper of all things on the floating island, Knuckles the Echidna investigated. Robotnik would meet Knuckles and put on a fake nice guy persona to trick him. Robotnik manipulated Knuckles into thinking that it was Sonic who was the bad guy and it was Sonic who wanted Knuckles' own Chaos Emeralds, when in truth Robotnik wanted the Emeralds for himself. Sonic and Tails searched for the floating island to see if Robotnik had indeed crash landed there. He was correct, there Sonic would face Knuckles and the two would do battle. Robotnik continued to feed lies into Knuckles, who truly believed he was a nice man. Sonic and Knuckles fought in a ferocious battle. During the fight between Knuckles and Sonic, Tails was able to capture Dr. Robotnik. With Robotnik captured, Sonic returned to his secret underground base. Robotnik was taken prisoner in Sonic's secret underground base, however unknown to Sonic, Robotnik had a tracking device in one of his teeth. With that, Knuckles was able to track down Robotnik's location and rescue him. Porker Lewis was taken hostage, and in return for his life, Robotnik demanded the Chaos Emeralds that Sonic had with him. Sonic had no choice but to hand over the Chaos Emeralds to Robotnik, and with them now in his possession, Robotnik and Knuckles made their escape back to the floating island. After a slight delay by Sonic, Robotnik and Knuckles made their way back to the Emerald Chamber. There, with a device he had created, Robotnik reintegrated the 12 Chaos Emeralds to once more become 6 again, as they used to be in the past. This is when Robotnik finally revealed his true motives and betrayed Knuckles. The device Robotnik built wasn't just to reintegrate the Chaos Emeralds together, but it was also to absorb the Chaos Emeralds' power into himself. However, Knuckles had kept one thing secret from Robotnik, the Grey Chaos Emerald, which Knuckles had told Robotnik it had been lost forever. The Grey Emerald has the power to control all the other Chaos Emeralds, and with it, Knuckles took away all of Robotnik's powers and sent him down to Mobius. Shortly after, and with Robotnik now having the knowledge of the location of Sonic's secret base, he personally launched a full-scale attack on it in a bid for revenge. Feeling guilty for Robotnik having knowledge of Sonic's secret base as a result of him being the one to rescue him previously, Knuckles returned and the two reluctantly teamed up and defeated Robotnik and his army. Robotnik would now put his entire focus and attention into repairing the damaged Death Egg. The Death Egg required brand new thrusters to be built. This was taking a lot longer to repair the Death Egg than Robotnik had originally hoped, especially as Sonic was able to destroy the first thrusters from being delivered to the Death Egg. Robotnik would send the Marxio brothers to keep Knuckles distracted while he could repair the Death Egg in peace on the floating island. Robotnik began to grow tired of his minions' failures and constructed newer, deadlier and more dangerous badniks and troopers, the first being the SBS, Special Badnik Service. Troopers from this assembly line would be much, much stronger and much more intelligent. Some contained unique abilities such as transforming limbs. It was around this time that Robotnik made short fuse the Cybernik. Some time passed and the Death Egg was almost complete. All it needed now was his power source, the Master Emerald. Sonic returned to the floating island and teamed up again with Knuckles to set out to stop the Death Egg. However, Robotnik had sent a brand new Metallics, Metallics Mark II, to retrieve the Master Emerald and destroy anyone who got in his way. Sonic transformed into Supersonic and destroyed Metallics by punching his head clean off. Luckily for Robotnik, the Master Emerald had already been placed on the teleporter device by Metallics, so Robotnik could retrieve it. After many, many months, the Death Egg finally launched. 
Robotnik was so happy that he broke down in tears of joy. Robotnik was planning on the next day to bring the Death Egg down to the Emerald Hill Zone to really make the Emerald Hill folk suffer. As this was Sonic's home zone, the people there meant the most to him and Robotnik was fully aware of that. Sonic and Knuckles set out to destroy the Death Egg once and for all, with Sonic attacking from inside the Death Egg, battling Robotnik's forces and trying to make his way to the heart of Robotnik's massive flying fortress. Meanwhile, Knuckles used the remaining power from the floating island's defence system to launch his own attack on the Death Egg. Robotnik retaliated violently. Before all was lost, Sonic removed the Master Emerald from the Death Egg's power supply. Without his power source, the Death Egg was defenceless to the floating island's attack. The Death Egg was now crippled and beyond saving. Robotnik was devastated. His once invincible fortress was now beyond saving. Robotnik reluctantly left the Death Egg, but not before he could extract his revenge on Sonic. Robotnik attacked Sonic in his Death Egg robot. He wanted the Master Emerald. Sonic didn't hold back and let Robotnik have it. He destroyed Robotnik's machine and accidentally knocked him off the island's edge. Robotnik's jet boost still worked, but only just. It would not be a soft landing. Sonic knew that Robotnik's first target for the Death Egg was going to be the Emerald Hill folk, and he knew he would want revenge after the Death Egg's destruction. So Sonic and Knuckles came to an agreement. In return for Sonic saving the Master Emerald for him, Knuckles allowed the Emerald Hill folk to live in secret and safety on the floating island, away from Robotnik's rampage. As Robotnik was in hospital recovering from his injuries, he was unaware of any of this happening. Robotnik would now move to the heart of his evil empire, the Metropolis Zone, where in the center, Citadel Robotnik was built. The tyrant's leering face looks down on the city, a constant reminder of his domination over all of Planet Mobius. A furious Robotnik learns of the Emerald Hill folk's disappearance. He now makes it one of his top priorities to discover where they are hiding. Robotnik and Grimmer even make a trip to the Emerald Hill Zone so he can see the empty zone for himself. Robotnik now increased the amount of Badnik processing plants being made, but left enough working Mobians around so they would be able to fund his evil creations by their tax money. Such as Mechanic, the Badnik-sized dinosaur, and the huge rocket shaped in Robotnik's image, which was set to orbit the planet, just to name a few. After successfully pirating a copy of the Omni Viewer for themselves, the Brotherhood of Metallics returned and kidnapped Grimmer, finally showing their true motives. The Emperor plans to use the Miracle Planet as an energy source, just as the original Metallics did before him. With an army of Metal Sonics at the Emperor's side, Robotnik and Sonic set a temporary truce. With some quick thinking, Sonic and company defeated the Emperor and his Brotherhood, at least for now. A month later, the Miracle Planet returned, and now fully under the control of the Emperor, the Brotherhood then travelled back in time and removed the rotten egg from Kintobor's fridge, therefore meaning Robotnik never existed. But why would they want to do this? Turns out that Robotnik was the one who created the self-destruct sequence within the Metallics. By removing this program, they therefore can't be defeated. Sonic and Chaotix discover this and travel back in time to correct it then head back to the now restored time zone to warn Robotnik. After explaining everything to Robotnik in a heated encounter, the Emperor and thousands of Metallics attacked everyone within Citadel Robotnik. In an enormous battle, Robotnik and Sonic managed to activate the self-destruct sequence just in the nick of time, defeating the Brotherhood of Metallics for good. A Badnik based off Sonic proved to be just too unstable, however a new Metallics based off another certain individual was in the pipelines. This one would be much more controllable. Some time passed and Robotnik and Grimmer created Commander Brutus, Robotnik's long-awaited second in command. An elite powerful trooper constructed of Megatau, the strongest metal on Mobius, along with his computer brain, Brutus also contained the brain patterns of Robotnik himself. Sonic would be defeated easily by this powerful foe on their first encounter. Sonic would have to transform into Super Sonic to defeat him. Brutus returned defeated to Citadel Robotnik for repairs, but it appears that Brutus was making his own secret plans. With Robotnik's brain pattern, Brutus also acquired Robotnik's ambition, and after some time betrayed Robotnik and planned to take control of Mobius for himself. Brutus left Citadel Robotnik and set up a new secret base in the Misery Zone. There he would begin building his army. 
With the reduced manpower via Brutus going AWOL, word on the street was that Robotnik can't cope with the reduced manpower. Sonic would use this chance to turn the heat up on Robotnik with an attack on his citadel in the Metropolis Zone. Months later, Brutus returned to Metropolis with his army. Brutus called it the Revolution War. Robotnik and Brutus' badniks went to battle. Sonic and the Freedom Fighters got caught in the mix too. Brutus eventually confronted Robotnik, but Robotnik remained calm. Robotnik activated the self-destruct sequence in Brutus, the same way he stopped the Brotherhood of Metallics. However, nothing happened. Brutus had already deactivated the implant within him. Before Brutus could execute Robotnik, Sonic and Shortfuse arrived. In the confusion, Robotnik and Grimmer escaped. Brutus tracked Robotnik down. Robotnik was now equipped in a war armor battle suit. The two would now battle for control of Mobius. In the end, Brutus was destroyed and Robotnik won the war, ending the revolution. Robotnik would now realize that he didn't need to share his power with anyone else ever again. It's now been several years into Robotnik's reign. There was word on the street that Robotnik was starting to go soft. This news came back to Robotnik. The furious tyrant was going to show every citizen a reason to fear the very mention of the name Dr. Robotnik. Robotnik would send his troopers across the entire city, tearing apart families as he imprisoned helpless and innocent people in awful conditioned prisons while they wait to be taken to the feared processing plants. Robotnik would use his powerful minions to continually attack the freedom fighters with any chance he got. Some time later, the Freedom Fighters were having their own problems dealing with Supersonic. Sonic and Supersonic eventually split from one another, and with the Omni viewer's quick thinking, he was able to trap Supersonic inside him. Though Supersonic proved too powerful for the Omni viewer, and instead of stopping Supersonic forever, he instead slowed time down to a crawl inside him, Supersonic over a course of time would eventually become free. As a result, Sonic became trapped in the Special Zone. Sonic and Chaotix trapped the imprisoned Supersonic inside the Black Asteroid, a huge asteroid in the stars of the Special Zone. For now, they were all safe from Supersonic. Around this time, Robotnik was looking into conquering other planets in the Special Zone. However, the intel from his spy would inform him that the Special Zone forces are too powerful for an invasion. Robotnik would need more power and would begin preparations into building his power base on Mobius. It's now been years under Robotnik's rule. The people were starting to revolt and rebellions started to appear under his evil reign. The people were beginning to fight back against his authority. His name was starting to lose the fear it once had. These issues began to concern Robotnik and with still zero success with finding the Emerald Hill folk, he was becoming frustrated. Robotnik began looking into new ways to control the citizens of Mobius, such as recruiting a powerful hypnotist with a possible way to brainwash the entire planet. Robotnik also tried to clone Sonic, but the experiments failed as the clones would age at an accelerated rate. At long last, Robotnik would have some incredible luck come his way. Dr. Zakari, another echidna, although this one was evil, Dr. Zakari and Knuckles fought on the floating island before Zakari accidentally fell from the floating island. He crashed down to Mobius at a horrific speed. He was near death, but was found by a Badnik patrol. He was taken back to Robotnik. Intrigued that Zakari was an echidna, as Robotnik thought that Knuckles was the last of his kind, Robotnik healed Zakari back to health and replaced Zakari's destroyed limbs and half his face with machine. Zakari wanted revenge, and to offer Robotnik something in return for saving his life, he informed him of the information that Robotnik had been waiting so, so long to hear. The location of the Emerald Hill Folk. Robotnik and Zakari formed an alliance and immediately set out for the floating island. Robotnik left Grimmer in charge of Metropolis. Knuckles was currently away from the floating island, and with Knuckles away, Zakari reprogrammed many of the Guardian robots created by the Echidna race thousands of years ago. When Knuckles returned, he was immediately outnumbered and then taken hostage by Robotnik and Zakari. Knuckles was horrified to see what Robotnik had done to the Emerald Hill folk. 
Robotnik was planning to perform his ultimate revenge on them and turn them into a super biological computer. Once the process was complete, there would be no way of saving any of them. Meanwhile, down below on planet Mobius at the Metropolis Zone, Tao's Amy and the remaining Freedom Fighters were leading a huge rebellion at the Citadel. The people of Mobius have finally had enough of Robotnik's reign of evil and wanted him out. A concerned Grimmer called in reinforcements to tackle these protests. A huge battle against the people of Mobius and Robotnik's forces was underway. It looked like the Freedom Fighters had the upper hand until Grimmer called in all reinforcements from all nearby zones. The situation turned desperate until... Meanwhile, at this same time in the Special Zone, Supersonic had freed himself of the Omnivier, though Supersonic was still inside the Black Asteroid. Supersonic began to heat up the Black Asteroid to millions of degrees. It looked like a second sun in the sky. Supersonic had turned himself into a giant bomb. Vector and some scientists discovered that the explosion caused from the Black Asteroid would result in an electromagnetic pulse, a pulse that would knock out every computer and electronic system on the planet. Meanwhile, just before Knuckles was captured, Porker Lewis sent an emergency transmission to Sonic in the Special Zone to try to warn him of Robotnik's arrival. The message was cut short. The returned Omni viewer investigated the situation on the floating island, then brought the news back to Sonic of the desperate situation his friends were in. To make matters worse, Super Sonic would soon be free again. Vector caught up with Sonic and informed him of the electromagnetic pulse that would be caused by the exploding asteroid. Sonic needed to act, and act quickly. With that, he told the Omni viewer to transport the black asteroid high above planet Mobius. Look, it's happening! The black asteroid is exploding! The asteroid exploded high in the sky just before Robotnik could finish the Emerald Hill folk off for good. Robotnik's biological computer completely broke and crashed down. It was totaled. Robotnik quickly came to the realisation that the explosion somehow affected his computerised systems. He was right, though Robotnik had no idea just how much trouble he is in. In Metropolis, Robotnik's army was falling apart. All the imprisoned Mobians were becoming free again. The Freedom Fighters had taken back the city. All across the planet, the results were the same. The Badnik processing plants, the armies of troopers, all collapsed and stopped working. Robotnik's network was completely offline. Sonic arrived back in the Metropolis Zone, and with the Freedom Fighters, they was able to hold off Super Sonic until he lost all of his powers and fled. Back on the floating island, Robotnik ordered Zakari to use the Guardian robots to destroy Knuckles. As they used an ancient technology, the pulse couldn't affect them. However, the electromagnetic pulse didn't affect the ancient robots, but it did knock out the modern software Zakari used to control them. Robotnik then ordered Zakari to attack, Though with the arrival of Sonic, Zakari was easily defeated by Sonic and Knuckles. During the fight, Robotnik tried to make a run for it, but was caught by Porker Lewis and the very people Robotnik had hunted for so many years, the Emerald Hill Folk. Robotnik was captured. Was this finally the end of the evil tyrant's reign? Later that day, in the ultimate humiliation, Robotnik was paraded through the busy streets of the Metropolis Zone the very zone that had been the centre of his evil operations for so many years. The people of Mobius couldn't believe what they were seeing. The very man who made their lives a misery was handcuffed before them. Robotnik was on his way to be thrown in Metropolis prison for more than likely the rest of his life. However, Grimmer arrived in a massive coal-operated machine and saved Robotnik. While the steam-powered machine distracted Sonic and the others, Robotnik and Grimmer escaped into the sewers. Robotnik's goal was to get back to the Citadel and get his systems back online. Sonic knew that if Robotnik achieved this, there would be no hope or mercy for any of them. Robotnik had to be stopped. Sonic and the others searched the streets for Robotnik before they realised he'd escaped into the sewers. Beneath Citadel Robotnik in the emergency generator room, Robotnik was in a desperate attempt to get his generators operating again to get his systems back online. Sonic finally found him and quickly kicked Grimmer out of the way. For a short moment, it looked like Sonic was helping Robotnik get his systems back online, though Sonic knew exactly what he was doing. Sonic was overloading the power core. The core was overloaded so much that it was going to blow up and take the Citadel with it. 
It pained Robotnik to see, but he had to leave or he would share the same fate as his beloved Citadel. With a massive explosion, Citadel Robotnik blew up. It was over, this time for good. It was now impossible for Robotnik to gain control of his systems ever again. Robotnik was finally defeated. The day was dubbed VR Day, which stand for victory over Robotnik. The people of Mobius were finally free. On the edge of the city, Grimmer and Robotnik emerged from the sewers, the remains of his destroyed citadel on the horizon. Grimmer stated that it was all over for them, however Robotnik thought otherwise. Robotnik wanted revenge, and he wasn't going to rest until he got it. I will make them regret this day for the rest of their lives. Thank you very much for watching this video everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. If you'd like to see more videos like this on the channel, maybe even Robotnik's continuation, please do let me know. Thank you.